G'day everyone, Luck Horse here. Today's video on Baruch is a little bit of a follow-up on the video I put out on him roughly two weeks ago, where I looked at him and asked the questions about whether he was good, rewarding to use, and fun to play. Now the answers to those questions while still leveling Baruch up was an emphatic yes, but how is Baruch now that I've got a fully level build that I'm happy with? Well, Let's take a look at that and still the same questions about whether he's fun to use in this video now. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this is a follow-up video to my initial Baruch video I did a couple of weeks back. You may want to check that video out first before watching this one through. And if you'd like to watch it, you can find a link to it in the video description below. So since building and playing Baruch, I've played him exclusively solo and used him across the solar map in different missions, including but not limited to sorties, Kuva farming, dealing with the various factions, and I've found he comes up quite strong. Also, Baruch's build I'm going to show you in this video is the one that I'm happy with and works really well for me, and I show it as a possible suggestion for you when putting together your own build. But make sure you do you, find what works best for you, and go for it. And just a tiny bit of a heads up with the builds that I'm going to show, Baruch's Desert Wind Exalted Fist build is pretty bare bones and I haven't invested any former into it yet, but as I've got other frames to focus on building and rebuilding their builds right now, I'll come back to Baruch sometime in the future for his fists. So let's get the fun question out of the way. Is Baruch still fun to play? And that is a resounding yes. The footage playing throughout this video is a sortie three mission I did against infested Eximus units. And although I didn't set any world record times for mission completion, oh boy, did I have a hell of a lot of fun. Baruch's Desolate Hands ability comes in real handy with any faction, but the daggers flying off and hitting the infested ride in the Kisser is always satisfying to see and hear. Now the daggers are an interesting one because the build I've currently got for Baruch, I'll get 14 daggers, and when the Growing Power Aura mod procs, I'll get 16 instead. With the damage reduction capping out with nine or more daggers, the additional ones are just for fun factor for me, but also help with eroding Baruch's restraint meter a bit more too. Now the base energy cost for Baruch's Desolate Hands without any efficiency mods on is 75 energy. I wouldn't mind seeing that knocked down to around 55 to 60 energy per cast at base, as I think that would be a fairer amount for cast and recasting of the ability, because at the moment I feel the energy cost is a little bit too high. I also wouldn't mind seeing a future Warframe augment come through for Baruch's Desolate Hands, where only the daggers above the damage resistant cap would shoot out towards enemies or jump onto fellow Tenno, so in my case 9 to 16 daggers, you know, if growing power procced before casting Desolate Hands of course, would be the only one that would shoot out. Any daggers below the cap threshold would remain surrounding Baruch. The potential augment mod would also cancel out the double distance dagger range when used in combination with Elude. Now have you got any thoughts on this mod suggestion? Well make sure you let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter at LuckTorts. So moving over to Lull now, which is Baruch's second ability, and I found it's quite an interesting one. I've used it more situationally than anything else, say when reviving a rescue target and casting Lull to give some respite from incoming enemies, to casting it while about to hack a panel, Lull hasn't been too bad. Yet I imagine it a bit differently to how it currently operates. A possible suggestion for Lull instead of being an AoE ability would be to make it a more forward cast ability instead that has an arm cast action similar to Necros's Soul Punch, but slower and has a sleep gas type animation more similar to the yellow healing juice, which Moira sprays out in Overwatch. So it wouldn't be a continuous hold ability either, just merely cast and Lull would move forward and sleep any enemies in its path. The problem I see with my suggestion is that people may see that the ability is becoming more and more closer to how Equinox's sleep ability operates. And I also wouldn't mind seeing the base energy cost for Lull knocked down from 50 base energy to say between 35 and 40 per cast instead. What's great about Lull is that when enemies are slept by it, they remain where they are for a decent amount of time, and the ability at base level without any additional range mods has quite a good bit of cast range to it too. Moving on to Baruch's first ability, Elude, and I noticed I very rarely activated this ability. Look, sure it helps to directly contribute to eroding your restraint meter, assists in some decent damage resistance for Baruch depending on how much of the restraint meter is eroded, but I was more interested in killing the enemies so I didn't really activate it or need it that often. Now if I did have issues with survivability for Baruch which may have popped up during the early leveling stages for him, the Death's Door mod or better known to everyone as Quick Thinking usually saved my bacon every time I was in trouble of needing revive assistance from Worm Prime. So how would I change a loot if I'm not really using it that much? Well you know what I don't really have an answer for that one. The ability is actually really really good when used for the aspects it offers. It provides 
provides an additional layer of survivability with a dodging ability too. But I found just by focusing on bullet jumping and ensuring that you dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge, I was getting through missions without using it. So ultimately it'll come down to your play style or the times I did actually kick it in was when I needed an emergency boost of restraint reduction so I could kick in Serene Storm. And speaking of Serene Storm and Baruch's Exalted Fist's Desert Wind, my goodness is this ability a hell of a lot of fun to use. Get grappled by an enemy, time to kick in Serene Storm. Getting overrun with enemies? Time to kick in with Serene Storm. And you want to see enemies go ragdolling all over the place and do uppercuts which Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter would be proud of? Well, you guessed it. It's time to kick in with Serene Storm again. And look, you might have picked up on the fact that I love this ability through its sheer fun factor alone. I will say though that I reckon Baruch should, when at rank 30, start off with say 15 to 20 percent of his restraint meter eroded. So if early during the mission you get in a real bind, you've at least got Baruch's Exalted Fists to fall back upon. And if you're new to Baruch, this suggestion is based off Baruch's fourth ability utilizing the eroded amount of his restraint meter rather than his energy pool. Now I mentioned a rank 30 Baruch for this starting amount of eroded restraint could be reduced by a percentage for every rank down from 30 to the rank where Serene Storm first becomes available to use for the player. Again, the idea is to have it as just a get out of jail use Desert Wind card with a low amount available so it ensures that players will still mainly focus on Baruch's other abilities to erode his restraint even more. I mentioned about the uppercutting before and I think props need to go to DE here for the different attack styles because they look good when executing them and they are a hell of a lot of fun to do too. Sliding then uppercutting and watching the enemies float so I can jump up and punch them, to seeing a group of enemies clumped so I jump in and ground slam a lot of them, seeing them all go ragdolling, and even down to just punching the enemies. It's just so much fun using Serene Storm. For high-end enemies, it'll be ragdolling more than straight up map wipes, but I'm okay with that as the fun factor is key for me. So now we've had a look over Baruch's abilities and some suggestions for them, let's briefly look at the build I've settled on for Baruch. You'll see I've got Growing Power there, which I mainly have for additional daggers, and Handspring 2 is amazing, and that I ended up keeping it in there, and I was going to put Speed Drift in its place, but added Natural Talent into the main section of the build, which has worked really well too. Now Streamline is in there too, and as I mentioned before, if I get stuck in a real bind, then Quick Thinking has always got my back. I can't praise it enough for the times when I'm about to get knocked down to revive status, it's kept me at 2 health, and kept me upright. And here's my bill for Baruch's Exalted Fists, Desert Wind. Look, it's nothing special as you can see here, especially with having no additional form of fed into it, but if you've been watching the footage of Baruch dealing with the on average 90 plus infested Eximus units, and when I pull Serene Storm out and his fists, his fists do still quite pack a punch. Now there is a certain wind creature working with Baruch in the gameplay you've seen here, and I've found it has been an absolute legend for him, and that's Worm, or in my case Worm Prime, and when Worm is kitted out with the Negate mod, Worm will prevent status effects from applying to Baruch once every five seconds, and this is a fantastic mod. I'd highly recommend you using Worm and Negate with Baruch for protecting Baruch against a good number of status procs. And if you want to pick up Negate, you can find it at Cephalon Samaris's offerings, and Negate will set you back 75,000 Samaras standing. Now I did also mention that I have leveled up and played Baruch exclusively solo. Now how much damage impact you'd make with a team of damage dealing frames though in a group mission? Well, I'd probably say it'd be minimal, and even with Baruch's daggers jumping off to other frames who are in close proximity to you, those same daggers will likely just sip straight off to another enemy if they get too close, so that really isn't benefiting your teammates that much either, so I feel Baruch's ability benefits are more for him than they are for a team. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on where you feel Baruch fits in, whether he's more of a solo frame or a team player. Make sure you let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter at Lactors. So wrapping up this follow-up video on Baruch, you'll likely have picked up on the fact that I reckon he is a ton of fun to play, has really solid survivability, and becomes the Ultra A team when combined with Worm and the Negate mod. So what do you reckon about Baruch? Have you got him built up with a build you're happy with, or Dead Set looking forward to giving him a go when Fortuna 2.0 comes to Xbox and PlayStation soon TM? Well, make sure you let me know in the comments section below, or on Twitter, at Lactors. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did or you just got something out of it, leaving a like on the video would be awesome. Also, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and have alerts switched on so you know when my future videos go live. And I've got a number of social media links in the video description below, so if you're interested in checking them out when you've got some spare time, that'd be awesome too. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to wrap up today's video with a great quote from Reb Ford, better known as Space Mum and the Live Ops and Community Director for Warframe, where Reb said during the recent primetime 232 live stream, you can do whatever you want in Warframe, play it however you want, do whatever you want. Have a good one everyone, cheers.